Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. This is the third time I've made this video, so my thoughts, I'm praying that they're not going to be all scrambled around. I don't know if you guys make videos, but after you make a video, it like for me, I, I already did the video, so now it's like I'm going to be repeating myself. <laughs> But to you guys, I'm not repeating myself because I deleted it. And I want to thank you to one of my favorite subs. And I wouldn't have known not to delete the last one. I didn't even know there were problems. But it was weird, huh? Okay, so I was reading out of this book. It's called Brokenness. And you could see at the end. At the bottom, the author is Damien Kyle. And please allow me to read this. I'm just going to read a little bit. It is out of brokenness that we can more fully experience His strength. Whose strength? Jesus' strength. Over time, we can become content with a life that can be fully explained by the natural and is no longer characterized by the supernatural resources of God. Very often, it's only as God pushes us beyond our own resources that we discover and experience His. So, when I was reading that about brokenness, and if you remember the Lord's Supper and how he took the bread and broke it and said, take and eat, you know, this is my body that was broken for you. And just so that I don't quote that wrong, it's right here where he says, take Eat, this is my body which is broken for you. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 24. Now, I just want to give all of my brothers and sisters in the Lord, and, and who knows who, whoever watches these videos, I'm hoping it encourages you as a believer in the Lord Jesus, not only as an encouragement, but, all, all, but also as a guide of, of a, not a role model, but like something that I do every single day. Like I'm a person that perseveres because I've been broken. Uh, my, I, can't even, I can't even count the, the number of times that my heart's been broken. But it's the Lord Jesus that put me back together. And so when I was reading this, and when it just, it like, it, it feels good to know what he did for us. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm going to be getting a lot of weird comments. <laughs> because as the days get darker, the people that hate Christians and the people of faith, you know, I, I have to agree with one of my brothers. Um, the word church can sound very negative. But when you take the word church and, and use it for Jesus' bride, or you could, the word congregation, I like the word assembly. You know, when, when the Lord talks about the body of Christ being put together and that we all have different functions in the body, some of us are to edify, some of us are, are you know, were born and went to a, doc, a doctor degree or something like that and got papers, but me, I'm just... A simple girl next door type that just totally loves the Lord and I want everybody to know that there's an awesome supernatural undescribable inexplicable like 
overwhelming, consuming, holy, righteous, loving, supreme, like I call, I call Jesus Christ the real Illuminati because his light can shine in the darkest of places. And when you don't understand that you have to be broken so that Jesus can shine through you. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, wait until something doesn't go right in your life and you just thought that that was what you wanted and 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 you were just praying for it and and no matter how hard you prayed it didn't work out and that's because the lord he can see our lives he can see everything about us and when he when he says he's got the ability to search our minds and our hearts I'm telling you I'm so glad because there's no way can anybody fake the funk there's just absolutely no way oh my gosh that was my last bit of water yesterday I wasn't able to make a video because of my throat but anyways, and here I am doing the video several times today because it just didn't come out right. You know, I'm one of those people, I want it to come out just right. I do these videos for God. I don't do them for me. So if something doesn't sound right or if something sounds like weird or, or like it was kind of an audible, weird sounding thing that came in the video. And thank God for Mr. Smith, because I didn't even know. You know what? I, I, I'm i just so glad that I, I have another chance to make this video. The, you know, we need to be broken for Jesus. Now, I want to just read a little bit more. I hope you guys don't mind. Someone once said that we must be broken into life. And I think it's true. We must be broken into the life of Christ, like Gideon's clay pots. It's only as these earthen vessels are broken that the incomparable life of Jesus is able to shine forth through us. And then right here it talks about the Last Supper. When you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 24, Jesus took the bread, the symbol of his body, and he broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. And among, among other things, the bread represented a broken life, a life fully surrendered to the Father's will. Through the Lord's Supper, Jesus keeps the theme of brokenness ever before us. It is only as our will and ways are broken to the Father's that we are able to experience the depth, the beauty, and the richness of Jesus' surrendered life in us. And when you understand that the believers, they, they totally have an advantage over the disbelievers, the non-believers, the people that mock, scoff, and don't understand. I can't force anybody to have the same belief system that I have. And the reason why I am so firm in my faith and the reason I will die for my faith is because I was brought up in the faith. I don't know any other way of living. And when you know that we live in a fallen world and that it's going to get much much worse 
not only by mankind's doing, but not only by the economic crisis, not only the political rigged system, I'm telling you, everything's being turned upside down. And if you don't have your mind focused on the Lord, it, this world's just going to mess you up. It's completely going to mess you up. If you don't understand that this world system is a game, it's almost like Monopoly or the game of life where there are no winners. Everybody ends up in jail at the end. You've got no money. You've got no property. You've got no social security. You've got no say so. You have no voice. And, and when you see that they're going to be redoing the Constitution and I'm telling you all kinds of things are getting ready to happen and unfold, it would be enough to turn the forefathers where our principles were founded on Christianity and love, you know, and the pursuit of happiness. Well, I'm telling you, the pursuit of happiness is only going to be found in Jesus Christ, especially in these times. Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. That's going to be found in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11. The reason I was looking over to the wall was because it's right here. Can you see that? Sometimes I... I hold things up there when I think about it because the little pictures that YouTube captures, they can look really stupid. <laughs> so I hope they get the Bible verse. Let me do it again. You just never know. It could happen right now. Okay, so anyways, today's video is going to be very, very short because I have to let my voice heal my voice box or something like that has a cold or is fading away i just wanted to give you guys encouragement just to look to the lord always just to look to the lord and if you're going through something or if you feel like you're being broken or tested don't you know that jesus loves you and you're going to be a better person after the dust settles and I know that sounds crazy, but it's the absolute truth. And don't feel afraid to ruffle a couple of feathers. People need to know the truth. It, it really surprises me that people are accommodating evil. It's like we allow it. We don't want to offend anybody's rights. Now we've got bathrooms where little girls can be watched by men that think they're women. And, and this is a true story because it was on Jason A's video of how a little girl was going to the loo and a stranger, a male, a man in a woman's bathroom, transgender, hey, it's the way it is now. And you'll hear people saying, oh, well, it's normal now. No, it's not normal. I'm telling you. And they, they think everything's perfectly okay in the world. It's the Christians that have to be more lenient and bend to the way things are nowadays. That's just the way it is now. Well, I don't want any part of it. Okay? I don't want any part of it. This world is sick, crazy, and insane. And I'm not going to have my godly character be, be tainted. And, and I'm only going to speak for Jesus, for King Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. 
And when you look, people are losing their way, they're being lied to, and they're not going to receive everlasting life by rejecting Jesus Christ. That's God's Son. Who, who in their right mind can reject Jesus Christ? Well, I guess there's a lot of people that that don't think like me. And, and I mean, you know, I'm no genius over here, but I'm definitely a God-fearing woman. And when, when I use the word fear, that doesn't mean I'm afraid of Him. That means I'm in awe of Him. I'm in... I'm inspired. I'm amazed. I, I sit here amazed and bewildered and sometimes speechless. All the things that He's done for us and knowing that He created us. Can you just imagine? Open your hands and look in there right now. What do you see? You see the Father's hands. We're made in His image. And if you could just look at one little cell that you can't see, and when you look at all the lines and all the different roads of life, and no, I'm not a psychic. I'm just saying, look at your hand. God created you out of his hands. So when you look at your hands and realize that these little hands have, have a father's loving hands in a different dimension, he can't wait to be with his kids. And, and when you're happy and when you realize there is an everlasting life and it's only found in Jesus. And if you really want to know the truth, he's our big brother. Now that's something to think about. He rose from the dead and has everlasting life and wants us to be with him and his dad. And so when you know that we're a family and when we're one, nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing. And I have to end with that because my throat's on fire. <laughs> Love you. I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. Bye.